guys, today we're going to talk about phase number four of the menstrual cycle and it's the luteal phase. Now the luteal phase, luteal phase is a definite finite amount of days. It doesn't very much cycle to cycle and stress and other external factors cannot change how long or short it is. The only point in which your cycle can be affected by stress is when you ovulate. If you're stressed out before you normally ovulate or if you're traveling, there's a multitude of different reasons and I'll talk about that in that video. Your ovulation is delayed because it's your body way, your body's way of saying, you know, I know you're not ready for this right now. Um, you're not in the best state to make a baby, so we're gonna just we're just gonna push this back a little bit. So ovulation is the only thing that can be affected by stress. So your luteal phase is a finite, predetermined space of days, and it doesn't change. It can vary a day or two, but it doesn't range much more than that. There's not much variation in it. So let's talk about what's happening in your body in this phase. So the egg has been released, it's been let go from the ovary and it's in the fallopian tube and it's making its way, making its way down. So left behind in the ovary, the place that was the follicle that was growing, that, that egg that was matured and released, um, is called a corpus luteum. Corpus luteum, luteum, corpus luteum, that word. And once the egg is released, it kind of like breaks down on itself and it starts um, secreting, emitting progesterone. And just like the luteal phase has a finite number of days, so does the lifespan of this corpus luteum. Three different things that this progesterone is responsible for pertaining to fertility, a woman's fertility. Um, so number one is this progesterone prevents any other eggs from being released since that other egg has already been released and it's going off to do its business, whatever it may be. While double ovulation does happen, um, it's pretty rare, but it does happen, so it can happen. The second thing that the progesterone does is it causes the uterine lining or endometrium to thicken and sustain itself until the corpus luteum disintegrates in on itself 12 to 16 days later. And the third thing that progesterone does is it causes the three different fertility signs to change. And what are those class? Yes, Mrs. Jones. Number one. Number one is your basal body temperature. Number two. Number two is your cervical fluid. And number three. Number three, Mrs. Jones, is your cervical position. Duh. Good job, class. Good job. What happens to this egg? I've already talked about it in my last video, but let's repeat. A uh, mature egg that has been released into the fallopian tube has a lifespan of 24 hours. And so if there are no sperm present to fertilize it, then it continues on its way and at, the end, at midnight it just disintegrates in on itself and passes. It's either reabsorbed by your body actually or it joins with the endometrium and all the other goodness and comes out with the flow. I made a reference to midnight, but it doesn't necessarily happen at midnight. It happens if you ovulated at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it would die at 2 o'clock in the afternoon the next day and just made a a reference to Cinderella, Cinderella. The endometrium at this point, or the uterine lining, has reached its full potential of baby nourishing. So it's about um, five to six millimeters thick, and it can sustain a fertilized ovum if necessary. If the egg is fertilized, when it reaches the uterus and burrows into the warm, cozy endometrium, it starts releasing HCG, which is human Human chorionic gonadotropin. Human chorionic gonadotropin. Say that one five times fast. And this H HCG sends a signal back to that corpus luteum that's emitting the progesterone in the ovary to keep alive, stay alive, don't die, don't kill yourself, because it needs the this corpus luteum to stay alive past its lifespan of about 16 days to continue shooting out progesterone to help the egg grow. After ovulation, our body starts to slow down and gradually slow down and prepare itself for the menstrual phase, which comes next. But during this phase, during the luteal phase, you can feel like a decrease in stamina and energy and you can like slowly feel yourself just like like breathing out and being like, okay, time to relax, take a break. 
as our body's slowing down, we can sense a build in frustration, tension, aggression. Not the greatest things, but there are certain positives to these feelings and emotions that I will get to. This phase is a great time to just kind of cleanse yourself and release yourself of all the emotional baggage that you may have picked up throughout the month and to prepare yourself for a new cycle. When you sit down and rummage through your emotions and your mind and what's going on, a lot of things can come to the surface and it can be it can be really scary to have to experience these emotions and a lot of times we like to bottle them up and try to hide them and so it takes a lot of courage if you will to let yourself experience these emotions so if you have some time while you're kind of thinking and looking into your subconscious if you have time to kind of just play out these emotions whether it's in a hot bath to just let yourself sit there and cry or sit there and be angry about something it's really good to let these emotions and these feelings come to the surface and almost bubble over instead of it's a good time to release them and to look at them and where they came from and realize that they're not really serving you any purpose and to let go of them so you're ready to start afresh for the next cycle it's called the creative phase for a reason it's a really really great time to just be creative and there's so many different ways you can do this it's not just in an artistic sense um, it's thought based, idea based, there's so many different ways you can be creative. So allow yourself to be fueled by excitement led creativity. Take the time to notice what you're really passionate about during this phase and put your excitement into fueling the passions that light that fire within you. If you guys like writing as much as I do, it's a great time to do some creative writing. Um, I, I enjoy a lot more personal essays and journaling, but it's also a really good time to even do that and kind of get a little bit more creative with your journaling. It's really not the best time to hash it out with other people. If you have something that's bothering you with a person, this isn't the best time to try and resolve things. Um, I would say instead to kind of sit and reflect on them, think about it, and wait, wait till your dynamic phase. And kind of along that, sense it's not a good time to start new projects or regimes or try to change your lifestyle you shouldn't try to change anything right now and finally for what doesn't work well don't try to fix yourself don't try to fix the people around you just kind of let it be right now and accept just how things are power naps are going to be a great ally during this phase allow yourself a 15 20 30 minute nap during the day if you have time Make time for it, especially towards the end of this phase. Don't try to fight your slowing body with extra caffeine. Don't you know, drink extra cups of coffee because you need to just accept it and allow yourself to start slowing down. Okay, I'm not one for the gym and working out. I do like to ride my bike and go on runs and walks and be active, but this is a really good time to use exercise to relieve yourself of stress and anything bad kind of a way of therapy. Avoid any major decisions during this phase, and I struggle with this one because it seems that I always, not always, but every couple months, and it's always during this phase that I want to just like chop my hair off or do something extreme like that. If you're unable to do things in a way that you're normally used to doing them, whether that's you're very productive or very fast at certain things, don't get upset about this. This is just your body slowing down and preparing itself to just nourish itself internally. Stay away from anyone that is depressive or needy or negative. You do not want those people in your life right now. Keep a notepad or something close. I like to carry around, and not, it's not just in this phase, but I've been carrying around just a small little notebook and it's kind of my idea journal. I have a journal where I just kind of write down everything else, but this is my idea journal, I call it, and if I have any ideas or if anyone says anything to me that I could be, think would be useful, I'll jot it down in there. Now me, I love to-do lists. Every day, almost, I make a to-do list of things that I want to do. And sometimes I can get a little overzealous, if you will, with these to-do lists and make them really, really long. And sometimes I think I just like to put things on there so my to-do list looks longer. But in this phase, take a closer look maybe daily or weekly or whatever you want and look at your to-do list and actually kind of be like, I'm not going to get that done today. Um, 
or I'm not even going to try to get that done and take those things off of to-do list, maybe put them on a long-term to-do list, but take them off of that day's to-do to -do list. A lot of us are social people and we like being around our friends and our family and you know, just having a good old time, but especially during this phase, it's just not especially during this phase, kind of this phase and the next phase is a good time to just kind of like step back, lay off the socializing, lay off the social engagements and hanging out with people and just really kind of focus on yourself. And it's a good time to look at different things you're working on, whether it's projects at work or personal things and kind of clear out things that aren't working for you, things that aren't benefiting you or things that you are realizing aren't having the impact that you wanted them to have. Okay friends, that's all I have for the little phase or the creative phase. I hope you guys learned something. Um, I hope it made you think. I hope it made you excited if you're not yet there. So let me know if you start noticing any changes or different ways of thinking. I always think that's interesting. And until my next video, I'll see you guys. Bye.